plastic housings One for copper trace and solder Looking inside and magical You said I was too metal Little and utterly logical And the cap was first laughed at me In a fit of curiosity We're talking about pain, there's nothing particularly special about humans. Clearly we're relatively complex, we have a brain and a, a nervous system full of billions of nerves. And we can imagine the human body being like an electronic circuit. And these electric wires are the nerves. So when your hand, for example, comes into a, a contact with a very hot stimulus, that essentially activates one of these nerves. And then you have an electronic signal that runs all the way along that nerve to the spinal cord. And at that point, there'll be a reflex from your spinal cord back out to the limb. The signal will also go up towards the brain. So that's why when we look at a variety of species, the medicinal leech, the elegans, fruit flies, all sorts of organisms with a nervous system have part of their nervous system which is dedicated to detecting only these potentially damaging stimuli so they have a better chance of survival. And if you do survive, you'll then pass on this ability to your offspring. Put your right hand in the box. What's in the box? Pain. Stop. Pain is an important part of being human. It's part of how we learn. I mean, it's one of our most protective systems or our most important protective systems. I think the ability to design a robot to detect its physical environment, to respond to that physical pain, should be quite straightforward and to a certain extent already exists in robots that we have. In a robot arm such as this one, um, if it were to drive into its end stop and just drive through it, it could damage itself. If instead it, it detects that it's hit the end stop and backing off a little bit from the end stop, then that protects it from damaging itself. Um, and in a way, you could call that a, a parallel to the human, uh, human pain response. To signify to a robot that it is in a hazardous situation, I think we're getting closer to a point where the data could be called pain, to quote the Terminator films. Does it hurt when you get shot? I sense injuries. The data could be called pain. We, we have attached a biotech sensor that mimics the fingertip of a human. We were really the first ones who took a very, very human sense, the sense of pain, towards robotics. We generate uh, spiking-like signals, like in the human. We interpret that these signals as pain signals and different withdrawal reflexes. Oh, stupid thing! Pain, by definition, is an emotional experience. Uh, although it's referred to the body, but it's a hurt, so there's definitely an emotional component. Pain is complex, and because it's complex, it involves many different areas of the brain. And those different areas of the brain are doing different things. It's important to understand that you cannot have the sensation of pain without having an emotional experience as well. Pain! No! Enough! The question really is, can we develop uh, a robot with emotions? And if we could, would we want to? My father tried to teach me human emotions. They are difficult. We don't really understand how emotions are processed fully in, in the human brain, so it's probably a bit beyond our capabilities when developing robots. But would you want a robot that has full empathy? I think you ought to know I'm feeling very depressed. From a caring point of view, if you had artificial intelligent nurses or things like that, I suppose it would be very helpful if they can not just feel the oh my pain is 10 out of 10 today or 6 out of 10 and it's not just a, a number. Would we want a robot to have an emotional response to pain? To a certain extent it could be helpful because it would help it understand humans around it that are suffering from pain. We're getting to the point where we're going to put robots that are physically strong in unconstrained environments and they'd better be pretty aware of what's going on around them. So if you're using a robot like that, it better understand your unspoken social signals, facial expressions, and maybe it should be able to express them as well. And we've been doing experiments to see how important realism is in the robotic face, which is why we have this robot. Actually, it turns out that this is very realistic, but not quite realistic enough. And most people just find it plain creepy, to be honest. Uh, but we're working on it. Not so long ago, a company in America called Boston Dynamics released a few videos of some of the, the prototypes they're working on. 
and showing how they could react to problems. So if they were tripped up and they fell over, how they could get back up. And people online were reacting as though these robots were being bullied or they were suffering. And these are robots that, although very technologically advanced, aren't intelligent, don't feel emotions, they're not programmed to feel anything like pain. So they, they weren't suffering, but people's reactions considered them as though they were suffering. So when I get into the lift or I'm running for the lift and the doors are shutting and I put my foot out and kick the door to open it, the lift computer, the machine, the robot, if you like, senses that I've kicked it. Does it feel pain? No, it just knows that it ought to open again. It doesn't matter, in a sense, whether robots actually feel pain or not. We may imply pain on their behalf. We may perceive them to be in pain. We anthropomorphise them. So proving in the future whether robots actually do or don't feel pain may be a moot point, because we will still perhaps anthropomorphise the pain onto them. Well, I got one. Number five. What do you make of this? Mmm. Wood pulp. Plant. Vegetable, tomato, water, salt, monosodium glutamate. Okay, thank you. Now you're talking like a robot. We can't prove things like empathy, intelligence, consciousness. So if we create robots that are sophisticated enough, they may present those things, but there's no way we'll actually be able to know that they are truly intelligent, truly conscious. And resemble, look like, butterfly, bird. Maple leaf. Where? If we were to build an artificial nervous system, uh, if that nervous system gave it the capability of uh, responding to objects um, as somebody responds when they're in pain, then we have to ask, um, have we only replicated the physical mechanism? If we think that they do have the experiences of pain, then we have to consider their welfare and their rights. Uh, because an organism, artificial or biological, should also have the right to freedom from pain. Should artificial intelligent beings feel pain in the future? The physical side of pain, completely necessary. The whole emotional burden side of things, is that necessary part of being human? Does it have a spiritual purpose? I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. Does that make us become better people? That, I suppose, is up for debate. Well, of course, people have tried to think of humans as machines for a very long time. And it's quite a good model, and it goes so far, but it just doesn't explain everything. And we then turn to other explanations. Uh, personally, uh, I would say that the religious explanation is the clearer one, that there is a God, and God created us and gave us these abilities, and we are different from other creatures. Pain has fascinated philosophers you know, for, for centuries and indeed some people consider pain to be the pinnacle of consciousness. Of course it's not a pleasant pinnacle of consciousness but it, arguably it's a time when we feel most human because we're most in touch with ourselves as a mortal uh, human being. Many philosophers and cognitive scientists uh, understand humans as machines. Um, humans do seem to be are no different than just very complex machines made out of biological material. That has huge implications on the thinking about the future of AI because we might be able to build machines that are as complex as us and thus have abilities like us, for example, the ability to experience pain. And if we can build machines that are even more complex than humans, then they might have experiences and abilities that we can't even imagine. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Why did you program me with pain? This is a sort of question you ask a creator god if you believed in one. Um, why is pain valuable? I, I guess the answer I have to that is so that you can experience what pleasure is and what having no pain is about. It's that contrast. Very Buddhist philosophy, or I don't know if it's Buddhist, but they're just opposite sides of the same coin.
if or perhaps when we live side by side with robots and they're ubiquitous and they're a part of our day-to-day -day life, I think it's going to be quite important that they share experiences that we have as human beings. And that will include negative things like pain, but hopefully it will also inc include the positives like joy and bliss and excitement and enthusiasm. And the closer that they come to our human lived experience, the better we'll be able to interact with them, the better we will get on with them, and we may well reach a point in time in the future when we end up with two sentient beings on this planet who live and work together and understand each other. Well, come on, Harry, we'll be back soon. Waking up in the morning, looking under the covers. I protect the electronics from the gaze of the others. With my Phillips head screwdriver to look inside the answers. Why the man who make music are so seldom the dancers? Always so curious, taking plastic houses off a copper trace. I told her, looking inside and magical. You said I was too metal, blue and utterly logical. And the cap was first lost to me.